So I'm hoping that's my kind of my big mission, right? Hoping to shed some light on just some of these things that are being put in a box and ignored, get to some people before it hits that breaking point where I was dang near bedridden, right? Like that's the goal. But again, we're really good at saying, oh, it's mom tired. I'm running a company. I have a couple of kids like this is life until it's not until you can't get out of bed. And, and sadly, we see most of our people at that point. So getting them just a little before is big, a big kind of motivation in some of this do it yourself program we're, we're creating too. everyone. If you're looking to be inspired, motivated, educated, and entertained, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Bob Mom Podcast, the podcast where we explore your fitness, life mindsets, and actions that help you become unstoppable. You're worth it, and it's time to finally make changes in your life that will last you the rest of your life. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Bomb Mom Podcast. I am Melissa Vogel, your host. I cannot wait to dive into today's episode because we are uncovering the truth about your overall health and wellness. No more slapping band-aids on problems and issues. And today's episode is all about that. So I can't wait for you guys to dive in and to learn. But first, I have to welcome all of you to the show. If you are returning, I'm so glad you're coming back for more because this is just going to keep the knowledge flowing in your brain and your body so you become healthier and stronger and the best version of you. And if this is your first time listening to the Bob Mom Podcast, welcome. Make sure you go back and listen to all of the episodes because I don't want you to miss a thing and I want you to learn about where I have come from and on this journey and listen to all of our previous guests. Now, before we dive into anything else, I have to ask, and I know the answer is yes for many of you, but are you still struggling to lose weight and keep it off? We know that our health and fitness journey is a huge, it's a huge puzzle, and there are many pieces to go to that. We have to find all of the right pieces and put them together so our puzzle is complete and we hit our goals once and for all. If you try to go at it alone, and there's missing pieces, man, it is a struggle forever. And you don't have to do that. There's so many tools to help you. And many of you have tried fad diets and juice cleanses. And I get asked all the time, Melissa, what's the best detox to do? And I'm here to tell you that the only way to like finally lose weight and get healthy mentally, physically, everything is you got to really remove the underlying root causes that are holding you back. And your liver It literally filters all of the blood in your body every six minutes. Yeah, I bet you didn't know that. But with the influx of toxins in our environment, you guys, our livers cannot keep up and our bodies have no choice but to store these toxins away in our fat cells, our organs, and even our brain so they are not floating around in our bloodstream. And over time, this toxic buildup begins to cause symptoms of poor health and eventually can lead to all types of disease in the body. Once again, we have the amazing Dr. Cabral back on sponsoring this podcast, and he has a detox And it's a comprehensive, full-body, functional medicine detoxification system that gently eliminates harmful toxins while rebalancing the body at an underlining root cause. The benefits of this 21-day detox, okay, get a load of this. Are you ready? Decrease bloating and puffiness weight loss and speeds up your metabolism, rebalances your hormones, resets healthy inflammation levels, clear skin, enjoy healthy blood sugar levels, increase energy, improve sleep, strengthen digestion. Like this is your chance to hit the whole body reset button and get guaranteed results. Pretty amazing, right? And this is only for you guys, our listeners. So you guys have the option to purchase the 21 day detox at $100 off or you guys could do a seven day detox at $20 off. Go to the show notes. You're going to find the links and everything you need. But if you visit Stephen Cabral, and that's S T E P H E N C A B R A L dot com forward slash Melissa, it's going to take you right to this special. We are so lucky to get these specials just for you guys and being part of the Bob Mom family. So check it out. If you're looking to reset the entire body, 
this is for you. On today's show, we have Dr. Tanisha Wards, and she is the founder of Infinity Wellness Center in Austin, Texas. She specializes in finding and correcting the core root of conditions like fatigue, chronic pain, fibromyalgia, and other medical mysteries. Thousands of women have found Dr. Wards after not seeing results with traditional practitioners just cookie cutter programs and expensive supplements. And her holistic approach to wellness means she specializes in finding and correcting the core root cause of these conditions. I love that we dive in and she is just raw and real about her own personal struggles with Lyme's disease and autoimmunity, Epstein-Barr virus. And, And we talk about COVID and long haulers. It's Such a great episode, and I am so grateful that we have someone that can help all of us no matter where we live. I actually say in the episode how, you know, I have a lot of clients that are like, oh, we just don't have anyone. We don't have a holistic doctor or anyone around here that can help or where I live. Everyone can work with Dr. Wards. She is phenomenal. You can make an appointment. That's one thing that we're grateful about with COVID is that it forced us to go more online so people like you and me can work with her even though she's in Texas. This episode is just eye-opening. It helps everyone, I think, dealing with like chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and, you know, and just constant pain or hair loss or, you know, anything that it's not in our head. And we really talk about, we know our bodies right? We know when something's off and it's just not like she says, mom tired. So I am so grateful that she came on, that we have her to reach out to and just help us move forward. So as always, you guys take notes, listen to this again, pass it on this episode on to people who might need to hear it. Also rate and review, please five stars and write a review. It's super helpful. If you guys are looking to get moving and grooving and you want to start working with me the easy route, sign up for our new challenge. We will put that in our show notes because there's always a way to work with me. There's always a way to move forward. Make sure you're hitting subscribe to this podcast too. So many people miss the subscribe button. So make sure you're hitting subscribe and check out our Bomb Mom podcast swag. I will put the link to that in the show notes as well. Represent, you know, wear that Bomb Mom logo. And my favorite one is the shirt that says doing me for me. And that's right. We take care of our health for ourselves. So then we are the best for others, but it all starts with us. So enjoy the show, everyone. I can't wait to hear back from you. Rate and review, send me an email and take good notes. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Bomb Mom Podcast. Today we have Dr. Tanisha Wards on with us. Welcome to the show, Dr. Tanisha. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I am too. We are going to dive into some serious health issues, concerns, ask questions, get to know our bodies a little bit better through this episode. You have quite the background, personal stories. You're the founder of the Infinity Wellness Center in Austin, Texas. Is that where you're located? Yes. Yeah. But we're virtual also telehealth. So we see people all over, but we're physically in Austin. I love that. That was one of my first questions for you is can people work with you no matter where they're at? Oh, I love it. So you're also a holistic functional medicine doctor. And I love when I was reading about you that you don't just slap band-aids on things. You like <laughs> to get to the root. Well, maybe sometimes you have to slap a band-aid on something. <laughs> on my kiddo. Yeah. yeah. On your kids. <laughs> but I love that you like to get to the root of the problem and really discover what's going on on the inside. Yeah. I think that right there kind of sums up the difference between traditional Western medicine and functional medicine, right? We're not trying to cover up symptoms with medication or take things out with surgery. We're trying to get your body to function better. And in order to do that, we have to figure out what's out of balance. And I think that's a big miss in today's medical community for the most part. Yeah. Why do you think that is? What is your personal opinion on that? Why so many, it's just like a doc in the box and you're like in and out and here's a bandaid, you know? Well, we're just going to dive in, aren't we? I would say it's controversial. The pharmaceutical companies, I really Mm -hmm. do. I really think that's a big part of it, right? It's easy. 
and it's easy and to give a medication for a symptom. And that's most of the training of Western medicine doctors. That's their continuing education. That's what they're learning in school is all pharmaceuticals. Really. They get such little nutrition, like semesters of nutrition and how the body actually functions. I mean, they're still looking at the, you know, food pyramid is carbohydrates and refined yeah. breads and things yeah. being a huge part of it. So in literally they're learning in nutrition, how many macros do you need to have to stay alive in the hospital kind of thing is a lot of what nutrition courses are in general traditional medical schools. So I, I think this whole underground wave of you know, first we kind of called it holistic medicine and then, and then it was like alternative, but really I think functional medicine is the right term. And that's really, I think the future of healthcare and it's emerging and the more people are learning about it from some of these big names out there, like Dr. Oz touches on it, Dr. Yeah. Jockers, Dr. Axe, some of these big doctors are really starting to bring it into mainstream and more and more patients are wanting that for care and looking at that as a first line of defense versus my thyroid's not working. Don't just give me a thyroid hormone because I'm not making it. Why the hell is my thyroid not working? Mm -hmm. Let's figure that out. And that, that right there, I think sums up what we do differently. Yeah. Well, and I think so many more people are starting to become aware of, you know, I'm not just getting older. Like there's a reason for this. I think back in the day, like maybe our parents or grandparents, it was just like, this is the way it is. You just have thinning hair when you get older, True. You just get tired as you age, you know, like what you're 65. Well, just kiss everything. Goodbye. You know, your sex life, your drive, <laughs> your activity, your muscle. Absolutely. And I yeah. think people are becoming a little woke now. Absolutely. And, you know, the whole field of longevity is a whole nother, you know, medicine arm branch that's become really, really popular. Not quite what we do, but what we do does cause longevity. And I think yeah. a lot of people aren't retiring to the recliners like they did 20 years ago, right? Like they don't have a pension necessarily. They don't have just, you know, whatever the retirement that big corporations had, right. A lot of people are working well into their sixties and they need to be and feel well. And a lot of entrepreneurs, we see a lot of that, like they're running their businesses till they're 60. So they need to feel and be well. Mm -hmm. We really kind of hone in on women, men too, in our clinic, for sure. We see men, usually the women come in and then send their husbands three months later and they right. feel so much better. And most of our patients are not just looking to feel better. Like there's something wrong. Like they're feeling sick, tired, anxious, not sleeping, gut problems, and they've been written off. But when we fix it and heal it, we are working in the field of longevity for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, I totally agree. How did you get started in this? Why, why is this what you do now? <laughs> It's a long story, but I'll give you kind of the reader's digest version. When I was 15, I literally woke up with excruciating joint pain and a rash covering most of my body and fatigue and just out of it, brain fog, like woke up like that, went to bed fine, woke up like that. And long story short, we went to doctor after doctor. I was diagnosed first with lupus. They ruled out lupus. Then maybe it was MS. They ruled out MS, right? Like, like an episode of house, like it's never lupus. <laughs> and so I just went, they just went through the list. When I first went to my doctor that morning, so my mom took me to my doctor, they brought me in through the back door because of the rash, not knowing now we know about like, you know, it's social distancing and quarantining, but they basically quarantined me because I didn't know what it was. And the thing that held true was the joint pain and the fatigue. And so doctor after doctor, and it was finally a more natural minded doctor that found Lyme disease. And it took me about a year to get my life back, to get energy back. The biggest diagnosis that stuck was juvenile arthritis. Like that just happened overnight kind of thing, which doesn't happen. So they finally found Lyme disease and I had it treated properly and was able to catch up with life and live. And so I knew I wanted to go into the medical field. I started in radiology and then eventually moved into to medicine and became a doctor. So, so that, that was kind of a long process there, but essentially my own health issues. Also, my father has MS and we found out when I was very young, eight or 10 years old, and this was in the eighties. So he was doing some crazy things that are a little more looked at now as not so crazy, but he found out that his mercury fillings caused mercury toxicity in his brain. And that caused the lesions. We've always already kind of had a more holistic thought process in our house. As a kid, my mom would take me to get adjusted by a chiropractor and do herbs over or homeopathics over anything else. So I already had a little bit of that undertone, but it was really my own health journey that really led me to 
see the type of patients we're seeing now. Yeah. I can relate to so many things. It's because it sounds like your parents were like ahead of their time. Yeah. My, my parents were too. My mom was looking into like you know, why we shouldn't be drinking cow's milk back then. <laughs> you know? And yeah. I'm like, no one's now we have all these options. But back then she was like, this isn't right. This is sounds right. And yeah, we would go other routes. And if I had an ear infection, I remember laying with some magical oil in it that <laughs> she found somewhere, but my mom too got sick probably about like 16 years ago. And it started with the movement of the hand. And I'm like, mm. I don't know. And just being who she is, She looked into her fillings, looked into having Lyme's disease. You know, she got them all removed, no Lyme's disease and and she has Parkinson's disease, you know, Mm. but she was like determined to find some other root cause and she hasn't yet, but there's probably other doctors and people like yourself that she could have went and seen, you know, to be treated and everything. But like, I get it. I get how that health journey starts, even when you're as a child. And I love that, that your experience brought you to where you're at right now today. You know, not to get too off topic, but if your mom got tested for Lyme disease 16 years ago, mm-hmm. the tests are way more accurate now. They were about oh. 60% accurate then. So when I got tested in 1994, we were just lucky that I was the 60% that came back because most of those blood tests now are obsolete. We're doing things like urine tests and blood spotting. And before the urine test, you go and you get a lymphatic drainage massage because these Lyme bugs like to hide in joints. They like to hide in ligaments and tissues in your lymph system. So we're flushing them out and then collecting them in urine. So I have seen Parkinson's B Lyme is my whole thought of that. And she may want to get tested properly now properly isn't the right word with yeah. more advanced testing. Yeah. yeah. Because we know now that that testing is obsolete, believe it or not though, I'd say every other patient that comes in my office where I'm suspecting Lyme disease, they're like, Oh, I have a blood test and it was negative. And it's the same Western blot test they were doing 16 years ago that, you know, 20 some years ago for me, that yeah. isn't that accurate, but they're still doing it. Cause that's what insurance will pay for. Unfortunately, these other tests are out of pocket, the urine test, but she may want to get retested is my whole thought process with that. I think it so still too. could be, yeah. it could be. And 16 years ago, they didn't test for what they call co-infections, which are other tick-borne illnesses. We have now since learned that ticks can carry different parasites and other bacteria strains. And the CDC doesn't recognize this yet. We also think Lyme disease can be carried by mosquitoes and spiders. I would not be shocked. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. They're, they transfer blood. So, so anyway, she may want to revisit that just because technology has advanced so much because it's become such an epidemic in this country. I completely agree. I'm so glad we're talking about this right now because thinking, you know, we camped, we were in the woods, we yeah. went hiking and backpacking I got when it. I was a child. Is it, I was going to say, do you know how you got it? So we moved into a different house in Michigan and then we were, and we were clearing out brush, like part of a chore, right? I was helping my mom and, and brother was doing it and we had ticks on us. Like we know we had ticks on us, but but it was such an unknown disease at the time that it was never connected. But I had the bullseye rash, which again, we now know not everybody gets, but I had the rash. She took pictures of it. So we put it together later, but I truly believe 80 to 90% of the patients that walk in through our door with a diagnosis of fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, Mm -hmm. we don't know what's wrong with you. You're, you know, you have narcolepsy, it's Lyme disease. Cause I just listen to their symptoms, test it. And we We find it often and, and, you know, fibromyalgia, in my opinion, is just a set of symptoms. Something's causing the pain. Mm -hmm. Chronic fatigue is again, a symptom. I don't know why they give it a diagnosis code, but they do, (laughs) but it's really just chronic fatigue. Well, what's causing it. And we see it be Lyme disease a lot. So it's, it's definitely, there's definitely been a lot of advances, medical advances with the testing, but it's still the best test is still only about 90% accurate. Wow. I'm sorry. Did you say Michigan? Yeah. Yep. I grew up in Flint and then moved to the suburbs at 15 when I got bit by a tick. (laughs) I grew up in Saginaw. Oh, that's so funny. I went to Michigan state and yeah. I went to Saginaw Valley state university. That's insane. We did not know this. Stayed there and got out as soon as I could to go someplace warm. So I'm in Austin now I've been here since grad school. I went to Houston and then Austin. I'm in California. (laughs) Yep. Yep. I only go back for weddings and funerals and it's gotta be somebody really good for me to go back in the winter. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Well, yeah, that's where I was and that's where my mom was. So highly wooded area. So it's very possible for her. I mean, mm-hmm. most like not in inner city, right? But around Flint, lots and lots of trees and lakes and woods and hiking. Like you said, we grew up camping. That was what we did for vacation. You go up north. That's yeah. what you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You go to the, you go to the upper peninsula and you camp or you go to Traverse city and you, yeah. Oh my yep. God. This is so cool. Very neat. Very neat. As you were going through, cause you said you started radiology. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. What made you make the shift to go into more medical? I think I just wanted more. Like I was helping patients by running diagnostics yeah. and figure out what's wrong And that was a big part of kind of why I went into it, not knowing what was wrong with me at such a young age for so long. I wanted to help people figure it out. And I think I was just really in the kind of Midwest thought process of, you know, I'm going to go get a two or a four-year degree. I'm going to come back. I'm going to start a family. I didn't really honestly think a girl, little girl from Flint could grow up and be a doctor. And then I was talking to another a doctor that I was working for. And she's like, you would make a great doctor. Why don't, why aren't you a doctor, especially with your health history? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm not literally within like weeks I was applying because I had the prerequisites. So I think just think big enough, which is something I uh-huh. really try to encourage young women to do is just think big. Like, why can't you go to medical school? They give loans out for that. <laughs> Thing, yeah, right. Like they do. Yeah. I think that's interesting how you were like in this, like, I'm from Flint, Michigan. We don't become doctors. And then some, all it took was someone, one yep. person saying that to you. And it like opened that door and you were like, oh yeah, that I yeah. love that part of your journey and your story. Yeah. I gave a big thanks to her in my book, just like, Hey, you showed me that a little girl from Flint could just go to chiropractic college and holistic medicine and be a doctor. That that's cool. Yep. Before we started uh, talking, I was asking you about Epstein Barr virus EBV. Yeah, and she was telling me you guys how this is something that's coming up more now. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Is this something that you deal with as well? Yeah. So I'll fast forward a little bit. Recovered from Lyme, graduated on time, went to college, went to college mm-hmm. again, went to college again. <laughs> <laughs> 11 years later, started my practice in Austin, Texas, met my husband, decided to get pregnant, but knowing I have a history of Lyme disease, I started working with another Lyme specialist and did all the things to prevent transmission to my daughter in pregnancy, which it can be transmitted through the wow. placenta. Shortly after she was born, I had what we typically refer to as a flare up or a crash of Lyme disease, but it wasn't. I thought it was. I ran all the tests. I felt like the tests were showing me the Lyme disease was not active. So I started digging deeper and I knew this wasn't just mom tired. At first I thought it was, I was 37 when I had her. I'm like, all right, I'm old. I'm running a business. I have a couple associate doctors. This is what I'm supposed to feel like, but then it got worse and worse. And it got to the point where I was literally having a hard time getting out of bed and I'd come straight home and go right back to bed by six 37 o'clock. And I was like, okay, this isn't right. I know better. Like I know my body, this isn't just mom tired, what people talk about, something's wrong. So I just started running labs on myself and an autoimmune disorder came up with the thyroid, which is called Hashimoto's, meaning my body was thinking my thyroid was a, an intruder and making antibodies against my own tissue and Epstein-Barr virus popped positive. And what Epstein-Barr virus is, it's essentially a reemergence of a mono infection. So kind of like, here's a good analogy. You had to have had chicken pox for it to later come out as shingles, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to have mono to later come back as Epstein-Barr virus. When you first have mono, you have the whole flu-like symptom. So I must have had it because it was in my system, right? So you have the joint aches, the fatigue, the fever. None of that happens when, when Epstein-Barr virus emerges. It's really just fatigue. And the best way I could describe it is it's, it's a full body it hurts to lift my head and my limbs. I'm so tired kind of fatigue. It's not just, I stayed up late last night watching Netflix. I can shake it off the next night by going to bed early. It's like unrelenting brain fog, mental, physical fatigue, and it's a virus. So you can't kill a virus kind of like once you have herpes, you always have them. Mm -hmm. You can just suppress it. So I just really had to bring my immune system up and, and suppress the virus doing a lot of what we do now. And why that's important now is I'm seeing people who have had obscene bar virus in the past. I'm seeing it being re-triggered or reactivated. They call it reactivated EBV for sure. Epstein-Barr virus by COVID. 
a lot of people that have COVID and then have these lingering long COVID symptoms, we're finding it, it's Epstein-Barr virus, we think the fatigue and the brain fog is really, they've reactivated or activated it for the first time it was in their system, but they kept it dormant from their mm-hmm. immune system. It's a real cause of chronic fatigue. And sadly people are like having to step down from positions and losing their jobs. Yeah. And, you know, from a lot of this. Wow. Like, wow. <laughs> that of words, <laughs> right. Lots of like, words. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I want to thank Melissa so much for allowing me to share this with her community. This is Dr. Stephen Cabral. I'm a board certified doctor of naturopathy. I run one of the largest functional medicine practices in the world where we've helped over a quarter of a million people to get well or lose the weight or live longer, stronger. And all of those programs start with one foundation, and that is the 7, 14, or 21 day functional medicine detox. And the reason we start here is that it enables whatever individual protocol you do after that or diet plan to actually stick that much better. Because if you don't hit the reset button on the body, if you don't help to clean up the blood, if you're not able to rebalance healthy levels of inflammation and blood sugar and hormones, it's just difficult to be able to maintain the results of whatever exercise, nutrition, or other program you're trying right now. Again, this is why it's been so successful, but please do not take my word for it. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash Melissa. You'll be able to find out all the details of the program and why we guarantee it. And now well over 100,000 people have gone through it. So it'll do the work for you. It really will. You just want to be able to work that plan for all of the details. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash Melissa. Wow, that COVID is like bringing this out because I keep hearing other things that like it's messing with women's cycles and their period. And people are like just having it, not even like talking vaccine or anything, but just having COVID. They're like, my cycle hasn't been the same since. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you're talking about this, like if hair falling out's another big one I'm seeing post COVID. Oh my God. Like like a patient came in with a baggie of like clumps of hair. And she said, looked at me and said, this is from one week and like a balled up freezer bag of balls of hair. It's like, this is from one week. And I've got a lot of thoughts. <laughs> I don't know exactly why it's doing this, except for it's an inflammatory disease and it's attacking different parts of the body. Mm-hmm. But I also think it's depleting a lot of minerals. So the few things we're seeing with the hair growth, just a couple of little side tips is liquid zinc, which also liquid zinc is bringing back taste and smell like, really? like high dose, like almost to tolerance zinc will cause nausea. So I'm having people just slowly titrate up until they're nauseous and then back down. How much can they actually drops that you like swallow or put under your tongue. Yep. Drops. Yep. A liquid zinc, a a nicer, you know, a good brand. Don't get the cheapest one, but you know, a a well reputable brand of liquid zinc and then minerals, a liquid mineral supplement seems to be helping bring back the hair. The only thing I can think of with the hair is the body's brilliant. It will sacrifice. It'll rob Peter to pay Paul. (laughs) It'll sacrifice (laughs) things like hair, skin, and nails to keep your heart beating, to keep your adrenals functioning, to keep your liver working, right? Like it's going to prioritize and hair, hair, although it's a priority to me and you, is not a, is not a priority to the body's homeostasis of keeping you alive. Mm -hmm. I would not be okay with losing my hair. Right. But the body doesn't know that. So it's, I think that it's using those energies, you know, pulling energy from that to fight the virus a bit more. That's the only thing I can think of. The cycle is interesting too. I don't have a great explanation for that, except for it's just inflammatory and it's affecting, it's an endocrine disruptor and it's just, yeah, making it definitely irregular. But I do think that it, I should back up to that. Anything could trigger an Epstein-Barr virus flare up. The flu could going through a stressful divorce. For me, it was a stressful pregnancy because I was doing all these treatments to keep the Lyme suppressed. And I had a total, just totally stressful pregnancy for lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think it was that I think pregnancy itself is a trauma on the body now. So I think that like it just compounded for me. So I don't think COVID is the only thing flaring Mm -hmm. up Epstein-Barr virus, but every single patient that has walked through my door and I'm talking close to a hundred that's had post COVID syndrome, I have found an active Epstein-Barr virus case. Wow. And is that yeah. blood? Are you testing through blood? Yep. Blood yep. Blood Epstein-Barr there? virus. There's two antibodies to run for it. It literally, it's called EBV mm-hmm. on a blood test and it's the IgG or the IgM. IgM means it's a new first emergence of the virus. First time you got it. First time it flared up. IgG means it's, it's a re infection or reactivated. You've had it before. 
Now, if someone was virtual and wanted to work with you, how would you test through these? Do you like call in a script to their local? Yeah. Uh, yep. We use LabCorp, which is nationwide. LabCorp. I yep. couldn't think mm-hmm. of the name. Yep. So we can order it anywhere. Yep. That's yep. interesting. You guys listen to this because <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not easy to find someone like you to work with. And when I, I have clients in my program and I'm always like, Hey, did you have, well, have you ever tried this? Or, you know, Hey, just think into this. Like, did you ever try this or get tested for this? And they're like, Oh, I live in a small town in the middle yes. of nowhere. We don't have doctors like that. So the one good thing about COVID is it forced us to go more virtual, something I wanted to do anyway, to have a bigger reach and help more people. And it really just forced us into that for a short time when people weren't coming out. Right. But people are still having issues. So we just hop on the phone and now we have a HIPAA protected video chat through our program. And so now we've got it down to a science, but we definitely fumbled those first couple of months. Like most people did. But yeah, the beautiful thing about COVID is it allowed us to step out into a virtual telehealth space. Yeah. And we're also working on do it yourself, like DIY, we're calling it your infinity way instead of the infinity way guided programs for chronic fatigue, for gut repair, leaky gut repair, things like that to one for fertility. So people can also kind of buy the program, buy the class, buy the, it comes with all the supplements needed that they can do it on their own as well. But yeah, we're working with people all all over the country right now. We haven't figured out Canada yet because of LabCorp. People that live close to the border have just gone and gotten their blood drawn, (laughs) but we, we are trying to figure that out. We're really having to partner with their doctor to get these labs run. Now, do you do like an initial consultation or like, what if someone's like, well, I don't think I have these things, but can you just do like a broad exam or blood work to see what pulls up? Yep, exactly. So the first visit is 40 minutes to an hour, usually closer to an hour. We do what we call a a timeline health history. So I literally go, let's go zero to 10. And I ask things. and, And what I love about this is people always say, no one's ever asked me that. I ask things like any major traumas, major moves, major stressful times, exposure to ticks, toxins, parasites, or mold. Also culprits for causing these chronic illnesses and these chronic symptoms. We just go decade by decade. And then I list their symptoms and have them rate their symptoms. And I put the two together and say, okay, this is where I want to start. Let's run these labs. And we run things like blood and brain chemistry. And we do that in urine. We we run saliva hormones. We run mold toxicity. That's a urine test. We run heavy metal. That's a hair analysis test, all kinds of stuff. Stool. That's my favorite. (laughs) We check for parasites and (laughs) leaky gut and stool samples, Lyme disease testing. We'd run that in urine. So yeah, kind of just say, these are the labs I think you need. And then we re-meet in a couple of weeks after they get all the labs and we say, okay, this is what we found. This is your starting point. And then do you put them on like a protocol, like some type of supplement protocol or exactly. Yep. We have a three and a seven month program, depending on what we find. And that includes supplements, any bioidentical hormones that might be needed. Definitely. We have a functional nutritionist. A lot of it's food and diet changes. We find lots of things like gluten intolerances, dairy issues. Speaking of when I was a baby, I had colic. You were talking about, you know, not drinking dairy Mm -hmm. and no one could figure out why I'd been to the chiropractor screaming all the time. My mom is from Canada and she got on the phone with her grandmother who grew up on a farm and said, feed her goat's milk, stop nursing her, which now we know the mom can just stop eating dairy. Right. Right. But she said, stop (laughs) nursing her, give her, go, go to a local farm and get goat's milk. And I was fine. So we found lactose intolerant at like the youngest age and these poor babies don't do anything but scream. Right. Yeah. So definitely we, we run food intolerance testing. We also run genetics. That's a huge, that's a huge field. The it's, it's really called nutrigenomics, which is nutritionally things we can change with nutrition in your genetics. So we find things like, are you a poor detoxer? Does your mitochondria, you know, not make ATP properly? And, you know, are you not what we call methylating properly, which is part of the detox pathway. And so we can go in and insert either just one nutrient so they can complete the pathway or make a diet change. Or sometimes we have to give the end product so you can go into the next pathway, chemical process and pathway. So, so yeah, we do a lot of testing and it all kind of depends on the person's health history and their ailments and their symptoms. I think that's amazing. And I love that people listing have an option and someone to go to, because now I can't get, well, I live in a small town and we don't have people like that. It doesn't matter. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Now you have someone. That's exactly what we wanted to create. And like I said, COVID pushed us into it. Well, I'm curious, maybe I should be booking my appointment with you and run, <laughs> run with it. And then we could like follow up on it too. That would be really neat to see. 
I'm trying to think now it's got probably about five years ago. I remember we're in California. We actually live on the lake and we we're out in the boat and I like just started not to feel good. And then I got this headache and then I went to bed like at five, which I never do. And I didn't feel well. And I'm pretty sure I had a fever two weeks later. I developed this bump. I can't remember if I've ever told the story of the podcast or not. Mm. I developed this bump on my shin and I'm always in the weight room in the gym, you know, and I'm looking at it and I'm touching it and it's warm. And I'm like, Oh my God, I have MRSA. Like I got a staph infection, like from the gym and I'm like, Oh my God, you know, and I always hit my shins too. And I'm like, I don't remember hitting it. It was, it hurt and it was a bump. And then long story short throughout the day, it got worse and it started spreading. Mm. And then I found another like lump bump on the back of my other calf. It was just, I was like at a photo shoot that day, of course. And by the time we got like down to the end, I was like, can you not shoot my legs at all? Because I'm not sure what's going on with this. <laughs> or, or can you really retouch these? <laughs> yeah. yeah right. It. Yeah. it got so bad. Ended up going to the doctor and yeah, like urgent care right away. And they put me on antibiotic. And then I'm like, I think I need to go to the ER. Cause that didn't even phase me. And they're like, we don't think that's what it is. No one could figure out long story short. It, correct me if I'm wrong. Cause you're going to know this erythema nodosa. Am I saying it right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super rare. Wow. Right up my legs. And they were like, you could have been born with this exposed. You probably had a virus. And then it brought this triggered. out, this weird autoimmune Thing. Yeah, And I'm like, I was sick a couple of weeks ago. I had a temperature and a headache and I lay there. So after I had COVID last year, that was a fear of mine of hearing how it like triggers things. And I'm like, oh my God, it's going to come back. But I'm curious what's going on in my body. You know, I've seen that happen on two patients post COVID actually, both of them, this is really bizarre. Both of them, it was a red strip on the, on the right side of their back, like across maybe their trap Mm -hmm. rhomboids, like just straight down. Mm -hmm. And one of them's a friend and also a patient and I was touching it. And I'm like, what happened here? Did you hit it? Did you have a deep tissue? mist? like, you almost look bruised. Yeah. And I actually sent her to her, just her primary. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And and that's, it was autoimmune of the skin and it went away and it happened about two to three weeks after COVID it probably went away in two or three months. They're like, Oh, there's nothing you can do about it. And I'm like, well, that's, that's bull. Um, you can go on an autoimmune paleo diet and AIP diet. You can do some gut healing. Like there's some yeah. things we can do to stop the autoimmune reaction. They're all the same attacking your body. So we did, but it happened after COVID interesting, just yeah. right. I bet it was totally related to that day. You didn't feel good on the boat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, it, and, and it, yours went away. It did. And what's weird was because it spread like my ankle yeah. was huge. I had these welts and they were painful. Like it felt like someone had a lighter and was just Mm. going up and down my leg and burning me. And then when they healed, they turned into a bruise. Mm. So my legs and thank God it didn't spread past my knees, but they look like someone took a baseball bat to my legs because they were just bruised and awful. (laughs) So that's how her back looked. That's why I looked when I saw it, I was like, what is Uh happening? but they didn't report pain so much as heat. Yeah, so hurt. interesting. I I'm telling you the body is interesting. I feel like there's these things just under the surface waiting for the time to be like right? party. <laughs> she's right? weak. Yeah. She's got something going on. Let's go. Yeah. But I love having conversations like this and bringing you on, exposing you to everyone because hopefully everyone contacts you and like, we just pack your calendar full and we work with you and get tested and know our body. But then also like, If something happens, we now have you in our back pocket to be like, I remember (laughs) yeah, when Dr. Wards was on the bomb on podcast, where's that episode? Boom. Everything's in the show notes. So love it. Thank you. Yeah. Love it. No, because I think people need this care. I think people are tired of covering up the symptoms or just being put in this unknown box. We don't know what's wrong. Go home and rest that every time I, if I had a penny for every time someone told me that they were told that go home and eat what right and rest. Well, what does that mean? And you know, how are you supposed to go home and rest when you're in chronic pain or fatigue? Like, yeah, you're barely surviving. So, so I'm hoping that's my kind of my big mission, right? Hoping to shed some light on just some of these things that are being put in a box and ignored. 
Yeah. We need it because people are crazy. We know right. our bodies. Like you were saying, like after you had your child that like, I knew this was more than just mom tired. Mm-hmm. And I always listen to a woman's intuition. Yeah. If they come in and tell me, I don't know. My doctor said it was this, but it doesn't feel right. I put so much credit and stock into that because we know, we know, I think, especially as women, but as humans, our body, when it's not functioning correctly, we know, but especially as women, right? We might stuff it down and we might ignore it because we got stuff to do and people to take care of, but we know in my bigger goal would be to get to some people before it hits that breaking point where I was dang near bedridden, right? Like that's the goal. But again, we're really good at saying, oh, it's mom tired. I'm running a company. I have a couple of kids. Like this is life until it's not, until you can't get out of bed. And, the, and sadly, we see most of our people at that point. So getting them just a little before is big, a big kind of motivation in some of this do-it-yourself programs we're, we're creating too. Oh, I love it. That's, that's really, really cool. Okay. So tell us how we can find you. Where are you at on social media? What's your website? Yeah. So our clinic website is Austin Holistic Doctor. So A-U-S-T-I-N Holistic D-R.com. My personal website is Dr. Tanisha Wards.com. And then all of our social handles are Infinity Wellness Atex, which is short for Austin, Texas. Oh, cool. Oh, I love yeah. it. Well, yep. I can't thank you enough for coming on today and just, you know, opening up the conversation to all of this, because like I said, people aren't crazy. We need to hear and know that there are options to find out what's wrong. And if you are losing your hair, there's a reason. If you're not pooping, there's a reason. If you're not sleeping, there's a reason. (laughs) 100%. Absolutely. The body is brilliant. It doesn't just shut down for no reason. Yeah. And you don't have to suffer. I I say that so much in this podcast. Absolutely. You you don't have to suffer in silence. Well, absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on and for being another resource. I can't wait for people to get a hold of you to work with you guys. Yeah. And let's dive into my body. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. Thanks for coming on. We'll talk to you soon. Bye everyone. If you are ready to become a bomb mom, join my free course over at www.melissavogelfitness.com forward slash course. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host practice of the practice or the guest are providing legal, mental health, nutritional, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one.